here we have a bottle or tank for compressed gas. Let's say that we attached a strain gauge to the front of the bottle running left to right or in the hoop direction that is tangent with the circumference of the tank. And this strain gauge is giving us strain. Now strain is a metric that relates the stretchiness of a material, how much the area being measured has elongated in the direction of the strain gauge relative to its original length. It's something we can measure. And that's easier to measure than the internal pressure. So how do we relate the strain to the internal pressure? We first need to go back to classical mechanics and model this as something simple that we recognize, like a cylindrical pressure vessel. Modeling this tank as a thin-walled cylindrical pressure vessel, we can define some geometric parameters and material properties, and then solve for the unknowns using classical mechanics. This pressure vessel is mild steel, let's say A36, so its elastic modulus is 29 million PSI, and its Poisson's ratio is 0.26. The bottle has an inner radius of three inches and a wall thickness of a quarter inch. And let's say that our strain gauge is outputting 720 micro strain. We can't directly relate strain to pressure, but we can relate strain to stress through Hooke's law and then relate stress to pressure because stress is just a metric that relates a load like pressure to the geometry of your body that you're analyzing. So let's first define a coordinate axis system. We can say X is going to the right and Y is going up. Generalized Hooke's law then states that the strain in the X direction is equal to one over the elastic modulus times the stress in the X direction. But then we need to minus Poisson's ratio multiplied by the stresses in orthogonal directions because whenever you have a stress in an orthogonal direction, it tucks in, it reverses the stretch in the other direction. So we need to subtract Poisson's ratio multiplied by the stresses in the Y and the Z directions. The Z direction is just exposed to open air. There's no load that can resist any stress, so the stress has to be zero. So the equation reduces to just one over E times the normal stress in the X direction minus Poisson's ratio times the normal stress in the Y direction. So now we just need to define the normal stress in the X direction and the normal stress in the Y direction in terms of pressure and then solve the problem. Now for a thin walled pressure vessel, the normal stress in the hoop direction, what we're calling X, is PR over T. And the normal stress in the Y direction, what would be called the longitudinal stress, is PR over 2T. Now these are the type of equations that would be given to you in the reference material for the PE exam, or you could look them up in a mechanics book for work, but they're derived just based on geometry and load. And now we have three equations and three unknowns. We can plug in sigma sub x and sigma sub y, our normal stress in the x direction and our normal stress in the y direction, into our normal strain in the x direction equation, reduce it, and plug in our known values, and we end up getting that our pressure is 2,000 PSI.